One of the downsides of SRI growing techniques is that weeds grow more easily in the unflooded rice fields. Weeding must be taken seriously. Weeding helps aerate the soil, which is good for the rice plant, and again helps the root structure to develop. It also stops the weeds competing with the rice for nutrients. The benefits of weeding well outweigh the labour required. Two weedings starting about 10 days after transplanting are the minimum needed. However, many farmers have found that additional weedings are very profitable as they aerate the soil at the same time as they remove the weeds. Adding weeding sessions beyond the minimum of two sessions can increase yields per hectare by 500, 1,000 and even 2,000 kilograms per hectare. Automated weeding may be possible if you have the right tools. This mechanical weeder is very effective at aerating the soil and has the additional benefit of burying the grown weed, which then composts and feeds the rice plant. The weeder is a relatively cheap tool and its use is encouraged. A third key principle of SRI is soil health. For soil to be healthy, it must be loose and not compacted and must have plenty of organic matter to support biological activity. By biological activity, we are talking about millions of tiny bacteria, funguses and protozoa that feed on organic matter. Most of these are beneficial to rice plants and help keep pests and disease in check. These unseen creatures help keep the soil fertile also. This is because some of the microbes in the root zone of the rice plants are able to take nitrogen from the air and turn it into a form which is absorbed through the roots of the rice plant. This is therefore a free form of nitrogen fertilizer and is very beneficial to plant growth. All you have to do is provide compost to the plants. Compost provides nutrition for both microorganisms and larger insects, such as earthworms, ants and termites. These creatures in turn make the earth more fertile by creating air tubes and facilitating the breakdown of organic matter that the rice plant can use. Farmers often find that the best way to use compost is adding it to the field in the season before they grow the rice. Often this will be with an interseason crop such as potatoes or beans. As well as benefiting the interseason crop, this allows the full decomposition of the compost to benefit the rice crop that follows. Compost is basically decomposing plant matter, and any form of compost is better than none. So use what you have available. In summary, the SRI techniques are all about plant health. If there is a large, healthy root system growing in well aerated, fertile soil, the rice plants will develop many more tillers, of which more will be fertile. The fertile tillers will develop more grains and larger grains. The SRI techniques are about the basic ideas of how rice plants grow best. The ideas are not applied singularly, but together so that their effects are multiplied together. That's why the farmers who use SRI techniques are able to make significant gains with their yields of rice. We must also warn you that the very early results will not look good. You will think the plants look weak and poor quality, but that will change. Here's what one farmer experienced. Sebelum ada metode SRI itu nanam sawah itu kurang berhasil. Sekarang semenjak ada program SRI, saya mencoba sedikit dari ukuran itu saya ada peningkatan yang yang bagus gitu, yang bisa memberi penghasilan tinggi. Terus saya nyoba lagi seperempat hektar, bisa dapat hasil satu ton 800. Tapi sebelum memakai SRI cuma satu ton 100. Sekarang ini saya mau mencoba mengajak kawan-kawan untuk pakai metode SRI supaya peningkatan hasil lebih bagus. Let's review those techniques again. Firstly, select the strongest seeds by putting them into salty water. 
The best seeds sink as they are denser and will grow better. Add compost to the field to give it more organic matter. This will help maintain the good structure and good health of the soil. Prepare the field well. Plant the seedlings very young, ideally around the 8 to 10 day mark. Transplant these young seedlings quickly and gently from the nursery and into the field, taking care that the roots are not damaged. They should be placed in the soil in a way that the plants can quickly resume their growth. Plant the seedlings at least 25 centimetres initially and plant single seedlings rather than clumps of multiple seedlings. The single seedling will grow much stronger. Keep the rice field well drained and avoid flooding during the growing period up until the time of flowering. After that, the field can have a thin layer of water, one to two centimetres, and this should be drained 10 to 15 days before harvesting to allow the rice to ripen. Weed the fields at least twice, either by hand, or better still, a rotary hoe. Some of you will be very inspired by what you have seen. Others will be more skeptical. In the foreground are crops grown using SRI techniques. The others in the background buy traditional methods. Here's what other farmers have to say about growing rice using SRI techniques. Yang pertama belum tanam sri para bapak dan ibu sekalian kemarin satu meter persegi hanya mendapat tujuh on. Namun setelah kami mengikuti pola sri yaitu dalam adra masuk ke kampung kami pada saat ini satu meter persegi mendapat sepuluh on per meter persegi. Jadi pada saat ini kami sangat bangga. We would encourage you to attend any meetings on SRI that are held in your local area. And we always invite discussion on these techniques. Rice researcher Anish Kangani had this to say about SRI. SRI ini mengejutkan bagi petani, bahkan bagi sebagian teman-teman peneliti. Umumnya petani tidak percaya bahwa dengan menanam bibit muda yang tunggal itu kita akan mendapatkan hasil lebih baik, apalagi dengan penambahan bahan organik. Namun setelah mereka melihat hasilnya di lapangan, mereka terkejut. Wow, kok bisa demikian ya? Memang demikianlah. Sehingga saya pikir secara otomatis SRA ini akan berkembang di antara petani sendiri. Karena mereka melihat dan mencobakan. Dan men mengetahui hasilnya. If you are interested in adopting the SRI methods of rice growing, then perhaps take the time to watch this video again and take complete notes. If you are a little skeptical, then perhaps start small by using these techniques on only some of your land and see the difference for yourself. We would strongly recommend a period of experimentation of the different techniques to see what's best for you. For example, you may get better results planting your seedlings 30 centimetres apart rather than 25 centimetres apart. Try things and see what works for your land. But the question really is, if we can absolutely guarantee improved yields overall in your fields if these techniques are used, can you afford not to try? We would like to wish you the best of success. Good luck. <laughs>